For part two of our third interview, Dr. Stephen Lindheim chats with Dr. Cameron Nazat. Sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy what we think are valuable lessons about our history, sparking innovation, and newer surgical applications of reproductive surgery. So as you go through uh, your career, just on the flip side, and you reflect back, what would you say is the biggest surprise that you've had in the medical industry, you know, in our line of work? What's the biggest surprise that took you back? What I learned is that in medicine, especially surgery, how things go and how the knowledge and how the information spreads so slowly, so slow. And even when some facts in medicine are proven, in surgery are pro proven that it is good, but still the progress is so slow, especially in the time of internet and high technology that everything goes so viral. It goes viral very fast that uh, information about medicine and surgery progresses so slowly and the change is so slowly. And the resources are not allocated to make this better for everybody. That is the surprise. So, you know, all of us have hiccups in our, in our career. And, um, you know, if you, if you could say to everybody as, as lessons learned, what do you think your biggest failure is in your career? And, you know, why do you think it happens? My biggest failure in medicine and to this state is that Unfortunately, I have not been a good communicator and I have not been able to communicate and convince what is in my head and what I see, the path and, and why and how we can do more and change, at least in the area that I know, and that is reproductive endocrinology, infertility, endometriosis specifically, and surgery, and how we can take advantage of this and make it more vast, more standardized, and, and more democratized all over the world. That is what I have not been able to do, and I wish I could do that. Well, uh, from my perspective, uh, from the time that I've, I've known you for a while and the time that became, we became even closer friends, uh, I will tell you that uh, you've, uh, if you feel that that's a failure, it, it, uh, you certainly have significantly improved that because uh, your passion uh, was clearly an impact on, um, you know, on me. And uh, I kind of lived that, I lived through that passion and I'm, I'm much the same way, so I appreciate it. So, if you find that a failure, you, you, that that's uh, uh, it's pretty it's pretty minimal. So I commend you, I commend you on what you think is a failure. You have accomplished a lot in your career, and if you could just give a few words, I just know that you've had a, a major impact, obviously, on video laparoscopy, robotic surgery, but uh, you know, just for the audience, the the two. The two things that I'd like you to comment about uh, would be, uh, you know, your uh, direct and indirect impact uh, with uh, Society of Reproductive Surgeons, and more recently on the, uh, uh, you know, Endo March uh, and the Endometriosis uh, International Society. So, uh, if you could just give a few words about that. Thank you. You know, I. I am a reproductive endocrinologist and I give a lot of credit to the American Society of Reproductive Medicine. That was the first institution 
that after many years of trying, they allowed me to present a paper in 1985 at the American and Canadian Fertility Society, at that time it was called, for the laparoscopic treatment of advanced endometriosis, mm, stage four endometriosis, because every time I wanted to present it, essentially it was disbelief that we cannot treat advanced endometriosis with uh, minimally invasive surgery. So I give credit to the, in that paper in 1986, was the first paper ever that showed advanced endometriosis could be treated by laparoscope. Um, if advanced endometriosis could be treated by laparoscope, practically we can't do anything because endometriosis is one of the most difficult procedures. When it is bad, it is far worse than any cancer. But if we can manage that successfully with very good results by minimal invasive surgery, then anything is possible. And Fertility Austerity continue to publish our works, many of them. Well, tell me about um, your passion with uh, SRS and ASRM. As I mentioned, ASRM, Fertility and Austerity, it was used to call American Society of, uh, used to call the American Fertility Society and later changed the name to American Society of Reproductive Medicine. Actually was and is the foundation, <laughs> the foundation and the beginning of modern day surgery because I was a member, and I am a member of um, uh, American Society of Reproductive Medicine and Society of Reproductive Surgeons, who is part of American uh, Society of Reproductive Medicine. I was a member from the very beginning, and when I was in training and during my early years, was very active in surgery. Right now, we do a lot of IVF, but when I graduated and during my training, the majority of infertility patients, they were managed by minimal invasive surgery or by laparotomy. Many laparotomies were being done for endometriosis. And after we invented video laparoscope, then many of the procedures converted to video laparoscopy and video hysteroscopy with or without robotic assistance. But so the Society of Reproductive Surgeons is the birthplace of minimally invasive surgery. And in the Society of Reproductive Surgeons of the American Society of Reproductive Medicine had the first fellowship in minimally invasive surgery anywhere, anywhere because general surgeons joined a decade later. So, you know, as you're sipping your morning coffee or at lunch break, uh, tell me, how do you, uh, you know, what articles or what do you, what do you do to stay on top of the uh, literature today uh, and uh, stay at the forefront of the field? I have put all of my eggs in one basket and that is medicine and surgery. So I limit my area, those papers, those publications, because that is where I like to do, and that's what I want to ultimately contribute more. How would you tell our audience how you define success? I have to refer to you here, my brother, Paul, always says, if at the end of the day, I know I have done something very useful for even one patient, and I have done something useful for myself, that is a great and successful day. And that is a very 
wise and smart saying of my brother Far. And if you accumulate, if I know every day I have done something good for somebody else, my patient in my case, and also for myself, and do it every day, I think it's a very successful day in general. And ultimately, I think it would be a happy, successful day. What would you want the medical learner today to know? The fellows that come work with you, the medical students that are thinking about a career, what would you want them to know? I would tell them that go to medicine if you really love medicine and you believe you are going to change the world a little bit better and help people and your only intention is to contribute is your only goal is to do some good and everything is secondary. So, and that is very, very hard. When you go to medicine, and this is the way I was raised, and I don't say it is right. I do not say it is right or wrong, but that is how I see it. I think surgeons, doctors, they're almost like priests. They have to devote everything to medicine. And if you can do that, and you, you can say that the rest of the things, unfortunately, sometimes the family, friends, money, everything looks, everything else may come, but may not come. But they have to be probably, unfortunately, in my eyes, at least, has been secondary. And I don't say it is the right thing. But there has to be total devotion to medicine, then would be very, very successful, that person. But if that is not the case, because doctors are very, very smart, they may want to look at something different, if that is not how they see it. At least this is the way I see it. So here's the last question yes. for you. Is that what would you want to leave as your legacy to us? I would like to see that Cameron was a nice man and tried to change the world for the better and try to do good for the humanity and help people. And the way I like to see this contribution change, and I would be happy to see if I see, because I know what I'm going to tell you is going to happen, because we already have started that road. And I would be, it would be great if I see that we can democratize and standardize medicine, and especially surgery. And, how, and I know we can do it by combining data analytics, artificial intelligence, robotics, and what it is missing, and that is what I have been working on. And I like to see in my head, as I mentioned earlier, there are many things in my head that I have not been able to communicate well is that using, taking advantage of energy in surgery the way that we are now. And if you remember the Einstein famous E equals gamma MC squared, that is an area that I am working at the present time with some of my colleagues, some of my friends, and I'm hoping I would be able to contribute for the future and make the medicine, and especially surgery, standardized and democratized because many hundreds of million people around the world need surgery that they are not receiving it, and also medicine that could be so easily democratized for many people could have become, and don't take me wrong, 
I don't mention to become their own doctors, but they can solve their medical problems much easier. If I could summarize and tell you how your legacy will be left is that you are a great person and that you have changed the world and you've changed the world for the better and uh, you've made it so that uh, patient outcomes and patient safety and, and uh, 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 in a uh, global fashion, uh, you have clearly made a difference. Uh, I wanted to thank you enormously uh, for you know, sharing uh, your insights uh, as part of the series for uh, legends in reproductive surgery uh, for fertility sterility. And it's been a pleasure interviewing to you, you today. And it's been a, a pleasure getting to know you and uh, becoming a uh, very close uh, friend and colleague of yours. Thank you very much. Thank you.